Welcome back to Big 12 Today, Chris Bunn and Gabe Eichert. And now joined by UCF Athletic Director Terry Mohadra. Terry, thanks so much for joining us. Happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween. Thanks. Good job <laughs> on the pronunciation. Oh, well, I give credit to our producer, Robbie, on that. Uh, but I okay, appreciate correct. it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to uh, get my practice on as you guys will be a part of the Big 12 soon. Hey, good timing on having you on with this deal announced. What was your first reaction when you heard the financial numbers in this new Big 12 deal? Well, I think we're still sifting through it. I know you've seen some stuff out there. We haven't got the final numbers yet. So, uh, you know, I, I've been a part of some of the conversations Um <clears throat> And uh, we feel really good. I know uh, Brett Yormark's done a really good job in the Big 12 staff since he's come in. And uh, we've been up to date on the structure. But I still think we're waiting for some of the final numbers to come out. I know some of the stuff's out there. And uh, so, um, you know, the fact that we, you know, I, you know what you're, I'm reading the same things you're reading, uh, that uh, you're not taking, I think, especially for the remaining eight teams uh, that will be uh, in the league after Texas Oklahoma leave I think that you see that you're going to be plus is a great thing and I think that obviously the four teams that are being added uh, creates a lot of value uh, not only for market time zones but obviously fan fan bases alumni base youthfulness and I think uh, you know uh, we're just going to re- be able to rebrand the big 12 uh, you know uh, with uh, some of the new direction that we have. Terry, looking at what this means for UCF and and for, more specifically, the football program, just just how big of a, you know, revenue generation increase will this be for your guys' operation, and just how significant is that? It's it's significant, and uh, we'll need it. Uh, We're behind uh, the rest of the Big 12, and we've got – Teams in the Big 12 have been playing since the late 1800s, been playing football. And, uh, you know, obviously one of the most iconic basketball uh, schools in the country and not only the best basketball league in the country, we, we've got a lot of work to do um, to, um, you know, to, to get caught up. We feel really good, but we also believe that we're bringing a lot to the table. Um, that um, part of that number that you see has a lot to do with and some of the teams that, were com- that are coming in. Uh, when you start looking at drilling down into the, uh, you know, our alumni base, we're the second largest next year will be the second largest alumni base next to Texas in the big 12 and the average age of our alumni are 38. How about that? Not, I'm not sure what the average age of Texas alumni. And so we keep getting younger. Uh, and uh, so we feel really good about it. We feel like we're going to bring a lot to the table. I think this region being able to plant a flag in the middle of one of the fastest growing markets in America 17th largest media market in America and uh, just, you know, the, the, the resources the state of Florida has. And uh, we feel like we're bringing a lot to the table and, and we're happy to join with uh, the league and, and, and having we got, they are really smart ADs and the smart administrations, uh, presidents and chancellors. And, uh, and uh, we feel really good about uh, our membership. We're joined with Terry Mohadra, the, Athletic director at UCF and Terry, the bounce house lived up to its name this past weekend. If you were trying to watch that game on TV, I mean, the cameras were shaking as you guys <laughs> beat Cincinnati. What was the atmosphere like this weekend with a big win? It was, uh, it was crazy. Actually, you know, it was one of our first Saturday games this year. Uh, we had, we had a Thursday night game. We had a, our space game on a, another Thursday night. And then, because of the hurricanes, we had to move our SMU game to a Wednesday night. So that was one of our first Saturday, our second Saturday night game. We played Georgia Tech on a Saturday as well. And, and so uh, everybody was tailgating. Uh, it was happening. The students were, you know, we had tons of student tickets allocated. Uh, and uh, it was just, it was, uh, it was electric. And uh, I think we played pretty well and our guys showed up. So it was great. Terry, how, how has Gus Mouse on? Ben, what what is your guys' relationship like? How, how's it been working with Coach? Well, I've worked with him before, and so uh, this is my second stint with him. It's been good. I mean, he's he's come in and really changed, helped change the culture. You know, we had you think about it, we had we've had three coaches in six years here, and uh, that's a lot for any program. I, thank God. I mean, maybe fortunately or unfortunately, I've I've had experience with that having that many coaches in that short of uh, span time. And he was one of my coaches. Uh, he's done a great job, excellent job in recruiting. Uh, we're definitely recruiting at a high level. I mean, we're, we're, we're recruiting against some of the top schools in America, top brand schools in America, and we're winning. 
Um, you know, he's we've had some injuries. Uh, we lost our starting quarterback last year. Managed to, uh, you know, finish, finish the season with nine wins and beat Florida in the uh, bowl last year. And uh, you know, we've had some adjustments this year, uh, starting a new quarter, new quarterback and. Uh, we lost him for the game and brought in our backup, and uh, he had a heck of a game, Mikey Keene. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had some injuries, and, uh, you know, i just very impressed with him and his staff. He's got a young staff. Uh, I, I, I think they're definitely uh, the future of college athletics and the future of college football. Uh, is a, a, this is going to be a strong program, I believe, for, for the future. And, listen, you never know how long coaches will coach or what, what happens and uh, we have to build a program. And I've said this for being a decade as an AD. If we build programs the right way, not build seasons, you can have sustained sustain success for, for a long period of time. Now, we're just in the middle of the season, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. And uh, I know coaches are, uh, you know, uh, working their tails off, and uh, we're very excited. And, and well, I'm some big t- taps on the Big 12, too. Of course, I'm, I'm watching all the games there, too, so – well, bringing Gus to town certainly uh, up the profits at the local Waffle Houses. Brett Yormark, <laughs> the new Big 12 first Commissioner. Watch. We're first watch here. We go first oh, watch. Gotcha. Uh, your Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark was on your campus this past week. What was your takeaway in meeting with him and, and, and showing him around the area? Well, so I've known of him for a while. I knew his brother, uh, Michael, mm-hmm. when he was the head of the Florida Panthers uh, when I lived in South Florida, he ran the Florida Panthers hockey NHL team down there, and I got to know him. And they're, they're a lot alike, uh, just very innovative. So I, and he worked at NASCAR and just kind of tracked him a little bit as a business executive in the sports world and the sports, sporting industry. Um, I think he's the right person at the right time. And, I, of course, Bob Bowlesby was an outstanding uh, practitioner and a great administrator. And, you know, I'll always be – we'll always be indebted to him for the invitation and – and getting into the Big 12, and I think Brett's, you know, from a revenue generation standpoint, he's, you know, he'll be the first to tell you. He's got to learn, uh, still on on the fly, uh, with some of the governance of the NCAA, and and he's got really good staff uh, there right now that will help him with that. But as far as revenue generation, uh, you know, looking at uh, the Big 12 with a little different lens, um, and maybe a more youthful, uh, little up and comer. Uh, you know, um, you know, mainstream, uh, very, you know, social media heavy, friendly. And I think he's going to look at it that way. And just you'll 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 see you'll see some announcements in the next, uh, you know, I'm not sure next month or so uh, that are some really unique programs that the Big 12 is going to be in, involved in. And it's going to be really exciting, uh, not only for all the members, but also the student athletes associated. Terry. I'm so interested in the process of moving conferences, right? I, I feel like it's, I feel like it's way more complicated than people probably think it is. What, what's the most challenging part of it? Like the preparation for you guys making the move to the Big Twelve. Well, it's funny. Um, I don't think my, I don't think my boss realized that my president didn't realize it when he hired me. But I've been through conference realignment six times. Oh, and twice in the Big 12. I was in the Big 8 when, uh, when I was working as coaching, and then I moved to administration, went from the Big 8 to the Big 12. And then the second time I was at the University of Kansas, uh, that's when Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, uh, TCU was brought in. And so I've had experience. I was in a different conference, uh, Sun Belt, added teams. The teams left to go to Conference USA. Um, and so I've, I've had experience with it. it it's a transition. Um, you know, it's a little different when you have – when you're the group of five – if you're going from power five to power five, it's a little different because the money's generally the same and it's the same resources. But when you're going from a, you know, a you know, group of five to an autonomy school, your resources are going to change, but also the resources that you got to put in the program have to change uh, to get caught up. Um, so, um, you know, I think we have the market, the region – from recruiting area, uh, we definitely have a fan base, uh, but we, we still have to tell our story. And um, you know, we have this public document that's out there on our website and our microsite called Mission 12. Basically, it's a, it's, it illustrates what we have to do in the next couple years in transition uh, before we become a full share member. And it basically kind of 
you know, just kind of gives you the roadmap of the different areas that, that we have to raise from a sports. And, and you know, and, and listen, you, you know, you always have outliers. You have the Kansas basketballs of the world, and you have the Texas footballs of the world. If, you know, how are you measuring yourself, the resources of, of those type of programs? And that's what we're doing right now. And, uh, you know, our hope, our hope and goal for the next two years is to try to be in the top half in operating capital uh, in the Big 12. And then, you know, personnel, we're keeping operating capital separate from personnel. We're looking at personnel. We know we have some ways to go on that. But, listen, it's a transition. We feel really good about it. Um, I think we have outstanding coaches. Our women's sports are knocking it out of the park, um, you know, right now and, and have been. Uh, our women's softball was in the Sweet 16 last year. Our, our women's soccer team beat Texas 4-0, to zero, uh, ranked in the top 25 right now. Our women's tra- uh, track program is uh, swept uh, track and field, indoor and outdoor. Um, you know, our rowing program is really strong. Our volleyball program is working on their fifth conference championship. Went up to KU, beat them three sets to zero in Lawrence, Kansas. So, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to throw that in anybody's face. I'm just saying I think we're ready to compete in some of our sports, but we do have some work to do in some of our guys' sports. Terry, when you look around the Big 12, how do you feel in terms of facilities that you guys – Back up, and where do you want to uh, get some improvements? We got some work to do, um, and you know, just in our stadium, uh, we got with our tower, some of the just some player areas. Um, then we have some, we have some really good areas. I mean, we got obviously the the the, the climate, the the region, uh, the proximity, uh, the airports. You know, from an NIL standpoint, with the, the marketplace is is outstanding. But from a facility standpoint, I've really I've really focused on our Olympic sports and renovating their locker rooms or fields or turfs, all that kind of stuff we've, we've done now. I'm really going to be focusing on our football campus. Uh, we have an athletic village that's second to none in the country, and we're going to create this football campus uh, that is basically residence halls, uh, you know, academics, uh, food, nutrition, at leadership academy, all that right in the one lo- uh, walking distance. Um, and so um, stay tuned for some announcements on our football campus. Uh, we're, we're working on some other iterations. iterations. Uh, so I, we got some work to do. Um, but, you know, listen, at the end of the day, I don't care how good your facilities are, you have to have the right people involved. There's never been a piece of stone or a facility help anybody get better. Um, it's, it's, it's part of the sizzle. But at the end of the day, you have to evaluate, recruit, and develop in order to be a strong program nationwide in all your sports. Terry, I think I speak for everyone here on Big 12 Radio when I say we are thrilled that UCF is going to be in this conference, and we are thrilled that you are going to be in this conference because you're awesome, man. I, <laughs> I look, I look right. forward to talking to you a lot in the future, and I've just got one more question for you, and it's, it's in honor of Halloween. Okay. What are you guys? What are you guys passing out at the house? What what kind of candy? What is there a theme? Are we are we doing fun size? Are we oh flexing that on people hilarious. and going king that's size? Question. Oh wait, you're, that's hilarious. So first of all, my wife just called me. She said I just went to Publix. And Publix is a big grocery store down here, and uh, said there's no candy there. <laughs> so, really? I said, we better get some, we better get something. We're going to get egg tonight by somebody. I don't know. You, you better go find some candy. But anyway, she, my wife's a healthy, a very nutritious conscious. So she like does not want to give out Snickers bars and Reese's. And this has been going on for 20 years, but she always had, had some healthy snacks. She always has healthy snacks. And I said, honey, you got to give them the good stuff too. So we're big Snickers, Reese's, Peter Buttercups, Hershey's, uh, was hundred grand bars, all those kind of stuff. Got to give them the good stuff, man. Just got to give them the good stuff. No candy Appreci- corn or anything yeah. like that. That that stuff, they, you can't do that. It's, it's got to be the stuff that's wrapped up, you know, those little bites. So the parents don't give two. We don't give the king side stuff. Just you know, we just give them handfuls. Love it. I take it. I. Leave the candy corn to everyone else. Oh, you awesome. like candy corn? You're a candy no, corn. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm saying that that's trash candy. Le- leave that to other yeah. people to hand out. That's gross. Yeah, you can't. You, you don't have leftovers of candy corn. Ugh. Yeah, we we don't really have leftovers. You know, as a matter of fact, in our house, and where our kids used to go trick or treat, my wife, 
used to say, okay, trade in your candy for a gift. And then she'd give me like, like a book or something. And I was like, and I'd always hoard some back and put them somewhere, hide them. So no one could find them. So uh, my kids always found them though, for some reason. So it was kind of funny. Terry Mahajer, appreciate the time. Enjoy the Halloween, the trick-or-treaters that are stopping by tonight. We can't wait to have you in the conference. July 1st, 2023. It'll be here before we know it. Appreciate it, Terry. We're excited about it. See you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.